On this episode of Delivering Marketing Joy, we talk with the sales whisperer, Wes Schaefer, and he tells us why we should do, be, have. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. I am your host, Kirby Hossaman, and with me today is Wes Schaefer. Now, Wes is a sales guru, a business coach, and uh, an Infusionsoft expert, which is an automation software uh, for marketing and CRM. And so I really appreciate, uh, Wes, you taking the time. Thanks a lot. Hey, thanks for the invitation. Absolutely. Now, one of the things I was thinking about uh, as we start this, you know, you market yourself as the sales whisperer. I love that. Uh, why? Where'd that come from? Came from my head. <laughs> <laughs> Good place. Just like, just like Dr. Seuss. He made up that name. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't a doctor. Uh, and he changed his name because he got in trouble at college and he wasn't allowed to write for the school paper anymore. So he changed his name. I did not know so, that. So what that means is I now have given all of your listeners permission from on high. They can say that the sales whisperer has uh, granted them the authority to name themselves anything they want. I was literally watching the dog whisperer, and back when he was still the dog whisperer, he got divorced, so he can't. He doesn't use that name anymore because of owns half of it. So that's why. Uh, so first of all, marry well. Uh, second of all, I was watching the show, and he says um, he said that he trains. What does he do? He rehabilitates the dogs, and he trains the owners. And if you've ever watched the show, it's like, yeah, that's what he does. Um, because the owners haven't been trained how to be good owners. Right. The pets just respond. And salespeople are the same way. I rehabilitate salespeople who have either never gotten good sales training or never gotten sales training at all. And and uh, so I'm rehabilitating them and I'm training the sales managers because usually the sales managers have never had training, mm. right? They were a high performing salesperson and they got plucked out and they made, became manager. Well, the skills that make you a great salesperson are usually the exact opposite of the skills you need to be a great sales manager. Mm. You know, so you have a lot of people there, you know, you can work well alone, right? Put in long hours, grind it out, you know, don't take no for an answer, all these things you hear. You know, aggressive, yada, yada, now you're a manager. But they don't give management training either. So I rehabilitate those people uh, and train um, But I was literally, I had my laptop on my lap. I was watching, you know, the Discovery Channel, whatever channel he was on back then. And I, I pulled up uh, GoDaddy and I, I bought that domain name. It was available. And Ten days later, somebody emailed me and asked me if I would sell it. Uh, so I knew I was on to something. Uh, you know, I said, no, I just bought it. I was in 2006. It was like, I still got the date from GoDaddy. I think it was September 1st, 2006, wow. um, I think is, is the date that I bought it. And uh, it took me a little while to figure it out, you know, what exactly to do with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was already doing sales training and training, and then I had to learn WordPress. But so here we are. <laughs> well, that's cool. So you've had, you've had a great deal of success in sales and in business. Um, it occurs to me you could give some tips. So what tips um, would you give for someone who's starting out in either as an entrepreneur or a salesperson? Um, write me a check for a lot of money. Uh, I'm only halfway kidding on that. Right. Uh, so, well, so let's narrow this down. You know, just a general sales tip, entrepreneurial sure. tip. Uh, what, what do you want to get? I can go for this. Okay, let's go, let's go sales tips. Okay. Um, you know, I'm actually, you showed me what you were reading, right? I, got, I, uh, I could show a screen that would mess things up. So I'm working on, as we speak, an updated version. I've had the seven deadly sins of selling. That was the very first thing I ever created okay. as far as a product. Uh, but I'm always learning, right? And, and, man, and figuring things out. And I'm realizing people like positive versus negative, right? So rather than um, the seven deadly sins, I'm working on the best sales secrets. So I just bought that domain name over the weekend. I'll be live. I'll be a free report that I'm working on. So uh, there's some bonuses in here as well as the uh, the main tips. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately any salesperson needs to discover. And in all of my trains, like I'll go over scripts and lines and things like that. And it's more to give them courage 
as they're figuring things out. But once you commit to being a salesperson and you understand the value that you bring and you understand that the other person uh, isn't equal to you, okay? And, and I have sold you know million-dollar deals to Google for technology when I was in that field. I worked with one of the presidents of Sprint back in the day. I sold a $600,000, $635,000 consulting package to back in 2007 people but at the end of the day they're still people okay and depending on what you do you are most likely more of an expert in what you do than they are okay so in all of my training everything that i do is to help you simply have the confidence zig ziglar always said it selling is a feeling is a transference of a feeling and that feeling is confidence okay so you must understand that and you know, the, the late, great Zig Ziglar, I love everything he said, I said, except um, be, do, have, okay? Be your best self, do, you know, and then you'll have. I think it's the other way around. I think it's, I think it's do, and then you'll become, and then you'll have. And what I mean by that is, you know, when, when I was learning how to really be a professional salesperson, I mean, it was years ago, and I was working the phones, Okay, and I did not want to work the phones. Now, I still don't want to work the phones, but the phones still work, especially in a B2B environment. Uh, and I had a sales coach, and he had me record myself. I just kept the phone and made prospecting calls and refined my script and internalized that script and owned that space. I was doing, right? And in the process of doing what a professional salesperson does, I became a professional salesperson. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I could have, right. right? Because with that came monetary success and, you know, notoriety and yada, yada. Right. Same thing with, with, you know, getting my name, right? I, I just did it. Yeah. You know, I, I bought the domain name and I filed a trademark. So I did, then I became, right. You know, too many people just don't take action. Mm. Pick up the phone, ask for the appointment, ask for the order, you know, uh, as a marketing guy I follow in Austin, Roy Williams, he always says, pull the trigger and ride the bullet. Okay? I mean, you got to do Even to this day, I mean, I've had this business now for nine years. I send out the weekly whisper, you know, to thousands of people. You know what? I'm still nervous right before I hit send. Right. You know, it's like, like you hear stories of like, you know, Justin Bieber or whoever's popular. And I don't know, Jennifer Lopez, uh, Maroon 5. I don't know. They, they still get butterflies before they go on stage. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's kind of you know I get a little bit of a little butterfly like, well, my entire list opt out of my email today because I just finally crossed the line, right? Yeah. That's for me. So I mean, if you don't have a little bit of that anxiety, you know, then I don't think you're you're pushing the envelope enough. So do then become then you can have. Yeah, I I like that a lot, Wes. I like that a lot. Um, so one of the blogs recently I read, and, and, and as I told you before we started, I've read uh, one of your books already, uh, but you, you still promote a human approach to selling. And of course, I know that we do, you know, there needs to be automation to, con to make sure that there's still follow up, but why do you think the human approach still works? Well, I think everybody forgets that, you know, at the other end of that Twitter stream and that Instagram and the Snapchat and the Meerkat and the Facebook. <laughs> I mean, it's a human being, yeah. you know, and I've always said that, that marketing is just selling in print, mm. okay, and everything you're doing, you want somebody to, to click a link, you want somebody to like a post, you want them to share uh, a Twitter uh, update, that's a sale, mm. okay, and so you've got to understand that, and yes, automation is needed. To scale, okay, it's on a website at midnight, and it happens midnight on a Saturday. I mean, and they want that free report. They need to get that free report right now. Right. Okay. But to get to connect with them and to make sure their questions are answered, you know, at a minimum, I need to answer my own blog posts. If somebody has some has comments, you know, and obviously, the bigger you get, I mean, eventually, you can't do everything in person, one on one. Um, but the only way to get that big is to do everything in person, one-on-one, -on -one, until you can't. Yeah. 
you know, and so you got to figure out what little things can be automated uh, and then and then have as much personal touch as possible. I mean, it, it, I just got home um, and there was a box waiting for me, you know, at, at the front door. So I get it. It was a, it's a company that wants me to rep them, you know, sell their stuff, recommend it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, they're whining and dying to me. And it's nice to get a physical item, right? right? A letter, a box, something. It's like, okay, it takes more thought, it takes more effort, and it takes real money mm-hmm. to send something, even a postcard in the mail. So I value them a little more. A little more. And I don't think you can get away from that. No, I agree. I agree totally, Wes. I, people still buy from people they like, know, and trust. And I think those the, the ways you just talked about are great ways to let them like, know, and trust you. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, thanks, Wes. You've asked, you've answered my three questions. Um, I, I give everybody an opportunity if they want to ask me one. I didn't know if you had one for me. Um, what is the one thing mm-hmm. I should be looking at in my own business right now? Meerkat? Is it Meerkat? Is it Periscope? Is it live streaming? What is one thing I should at least consider looking at that's hot and new and relevant? Okay. Um, I'll get two for you. Uh, So, uh, (laughs) and and again, I don't know that this is really like hot and new, but it's something that I've really started to have some fun with is honestly this Snapchat. I I feel like if if we're not telling stories to, and we talked about humanizing, right? Right. What I've found is, it's funny, I... (laughs) You'll get a kick out of this. I was on a golf trip with some friends, and um, they caught me doing a selfie of myself. And they they're like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I am communicating with my daughters. This is where they live, <laughs> and they yeah, they, they communicate they with me here way more than they do anyplace else. It's moved actually from text. And so I think depending on your demo, Snapchat's um, great. And frankly, it's kind of a lot of fun. You can be pretty creative and, and silly. And then, you know, the, the, the other one is what you just said. Um, you know, truth be told, I'm in the business of, of uh, I could say, marketing joy, right? It's, uh, so promotional products, mailings, that sort of thing. It's old school, but you just mentioned just now. There we go. I love it. You just mentioned just now how powerful the impact was for you today. I love it. <laughs> now I got to figure out what to do with it. I barely use Snapchat. <laughs> well, you have to look me up. I'm on there. That's not even a good picture. How do I redo it? All right, X. Yeah, we'll do it again. Here we go. All right, we got, we got to get a wide frame here. Yeah, there we go. We're going to Snapchat live on the show. I dig it. And you got, you got to do the, the fingers, right? You got to do like the piece, right? Yeah. Do I do duck lips or duck lips? Dude, is that do out? Do not do duck lips as a dude. Don't do duck lips? <laughs> I got kind of good at them. Okay, go for it then. But you said I shouldn't, so I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I won't do duck lips. All right, ready? All right. All right. All right, good deal. I'll do something with that in just a second. Yeah, uh, cool. Well, hey, Wes, seriously, I really appreciate you taking the time. That was fun, by the way. And um, I would love to do it again sometime if we could. Sure, let me know. All right. Well, that wraps up another edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you again next time. Hey, thanks for watching, but wait, can you do me a favor? Please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done it already, the way to do it's right over here. And hey, if you want to watch the last episode, check that out over here. Again, before you leave, subscribe.